Well, welcome to the Monday Money Tip Podcast presented by Fully Funded Life. My name is Joe Sangle, and it is July 24th of 2023, episode number 264. And that is the voice of my co-host, Megan Hibbert. If you're watching on YouTube, you can say hi to Megan. Hi, Megan. Hi. Are you fired up today? Fired up. Yes. Happy Monday. It's happy Monday. Uh, It's not the last Monday in July. It's one of those months where you have five Mondays. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. And we have finished up our theme, which was some money principles. And apparently this is that one that we're doing pretty much every month Mm -hmm. where we're taking questions that have been asked during live events, emailed in, social media in. Is that a verb? Yep. Is that what this is? And I, have I looked at these questions? No. I've not looked at these questions. And so this is going to be play stump Joe. And what I would love for our listeners to do is when you hear the question, there'll be a brief pause. And I want you to think, maybe you hit pause and think, what would my answer be to that question? Hmm. See if we're on the same page as you move towards your fully funded life. Yeah. And I think in the midst of, I always learn best when I hear questions that other people are asking. Mm-hmm. I find, you know, my situation is always the same, but there's lessons to be learned in it. And I think that's a really high value way to learn. Yeah. So Here let's go. go to some questions. All right. Question number one. All right. Number one, if you have about 5K to invest, where would you go first? What would be the best investment option to start with? That's a great question. Yeah. New investor. Okay. There's a pause. I'm going to read it. We'll pause. If you, well, maybe you can read it again. I'll read it again. If you have about 5k to invest, where would you go first? What would be the best investment option to start with? Okay. There's a pause. Did you like it? <laughs> it's kind of awkward. It's a bit. <laughs> I like to talk and fill in every blank, blank space with talking. Anyhow, I don't know what happened there, but anyhow, if you have 5k to invest, where would you go first? Well, there's a lot of questions that are unanswered here that I want to ask. Yes. Is this your only $5,000? Is this in addition to your rung two and rung five savings? Mm-hmm. You know, yes. we're going to assume they're on rung six. Let's assume the best. They got 15%. They've got their three months worth, right? And they got 5K and they're ready to start investing. They truly are ready. Where would I go first? Well, you know, I can always answer questions. What I, would I do if I woke up tomorrow in their shoes? I'm not a registered investment officer. But if I woke up tomorrow in your shoes and I was working on rung six, which is 15% into tax advantage investments, and it's my first 5,000, or at least it's my first 100K, I'm going to put it straight into an S&P 500 index fund. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to try to time it. I'm going to take the $5,000. I'm going to divide it into $1,000 increments. And I'm going to choose a day of the month. Say it's the 13th. And I'm going to move $1,000 in. And a month later on that same date, I'm going to move $1,000 in. And a month later, $1,000 in. That's called dollar cost averaging. And after five full months, I'll be fully invested into an S&P 500 index fund. That's investing in 500 companies that are most representative of the American economy. Um, Many wealthy people say that's where they would start. And so I've done that. Index funds have been great. They have very low fees, almost no fees. And they're available anywhere you invest. Hmm. It's good. Anything you would add to that? No, I think that's great. Okay. Is there, what is, I know you briefly mentioned the, I'm doing a thousand dollars each month, the dollar cost averaging is how we call that. Mm-hmm. What, if you had a little bit more of an explanation on that? Well, okay. That's good. Mm-hmm. So by, if you put it all in on one day, you're going to be like, did I choose the right day? Mm-hmm. Was this a good day? Well, you know, it's proven over time that just steady, consistent investing over time is the best method to invest. That's good. So when you have a large chunk, which I'm going to assume 5,000 is a large chunk for this person, dividing it into one month at a time. Well, if it's higher each month, you're going to be like, doggone it, Joe. I should have put it all in then. But of course, it went down. You'll be like, whoo, I'm so glad, Joe. It's awesome. That's so, yep. you know, but over time, we know that dollar cost averaging works best. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, all right. Number two. How can I put God and giving and saving before budgeting my bills? That's a really good question. Oh, you didn't pause. Again. Well, let's read the question. (laughs) I just said it was a really good question. I said before I answer it, I filled it up with words, but I did not answer it. I shall read again. You shall. I shall. (laughs) Okay. 
King James version. (laughs) How can I put God and giving and saving before budgeting my bills? And I shall not answer before pausing. Okay. (laughs) So you're laughing because you know it's so hard for me to not talk. How can I put God in giving and savings before budgeting my bills? Um, Very simple. In your budget, put in giving to God and giving to your savings account before you put in your bills. Hmm. And I know, I know the heart of this question is, Hey, I already have, I have no margin in my life. Well, here's what I know. You need to make a decision to, to say, is God going to be first in your life or not? And for me, you know, it wasn't until I said, Hey, I'm going to make this decision Throughout God's word, it says, put God first in every area of your life. And you want to see some verses on that, go to Deuteronomy 8, 18, where it says, you know, you may say to my, yourself that you you built this with your own hands and all that stuff. But it says, remember your Lord, your God, for it's he who gives you the power to produce wealth. And then you can go to Proverbs 3, 9, where it says, bring the first fruits to the Lord first fruits of all your crops. You can go to Jesus affirming the tithe in Matthew 23, 23. Just search for the word first fruits. It's in the Bible in the King James version. Thou shalt find it there, you know, 30 times. Isn't that awesome? Uh, 32 times to be exact. So here's what I would just say. Um, how do you do it? You make up, you make up your mind that you're going to do that. And what they're really saying is, are, are you really going to say, I should be laid on my bills and tithe instead. I would just tell you this. Um, how many, how many car payments do you have in there? Mm. How, how many debt payments do you have in there? And when you made those decisions, did you seek God before you did those decisions? And listen, if you're not going to start tithing today, when are you going to start? Mm. I mean, when is it going to happen? And a lot of people, they try to do deal making and saying, well, I'll start giving when when I get debt free, when I get the pay raise, when I get that job, when, 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 when never comes around. It never happens. It, it the people who choose to give it's cause they made a commitment to do so. Mm-hmm. So I would just say the reason we teach budgeting is it allows you to put the things that are most important in there first, and then you make everything else subordinate to it. And giving is the very first thing on our budget template because of this very nature of putting the Lord first. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we do it, but it starts with a commitment. Yeah. And there's lots, um, I won't, I won't, I hate blanket statements, but a lot of the time there are areas of said budget that are able to be cut. Right. So do you have an Amazon item on your budget? Maybe it's not on there listed as Amazon, but do Amazon boxes show up at your house? Do you go out to eat often? You know, are you buying clothes? Like, and I know it's not fun to think about why well, I, I like buying things from Amazon and I like going out to eat and I like getting new clothes. Yeah. Like who doesn't, but we're not saying it's forever, but for now, maybe yeah. some of those things need to leave for a little bit so that you're able to set your priorities. Correctly. And I would just say this, Hey, it, it's probably going to require sacrifice. Right. And no one in America wants to hear the word sacrifice. Yeah. You mean I'm going to sacrifice to give to God. Well, he gave his life. Well, so. exactly. Yeah. I, I heard it once said by a preacher that it just really good statement says, you know, are you really going to stand at the foot of a blood stained cross and say, what's the least I could give? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I would just say, hey, if sacrifice is required, there's lessons to be learned in the midst of that. Mm-hmm. And people that don't have faith, people that they're not going to understand any of that. But we are creating the image of God. And because of that, we are compelled to be givers Mm. and we are most alive and experience the deepest rooted joy when we choose to give. Mm -hmm. It's really awesome. It's a great question. Get fired up. All right. Our next one. What banks do you recommend besides Wells Fargo? What banks do you recommend besides Wells Fargo? Ah, I didn't know that I recommended Wells Fargo in the first place. I didn't either. (laughs) You know, we recommend banks that uh, treat their customers really good. We recommend banks that pay good interest. Mm -hmm. We recommend banks that don't go broke. So, you know which banks those are? (laughs) We can't guarantee any of it, but FDIC insurance protects your deposit accounts. And the banks that we really like uh, right now, as of the recording of this podcast, are Marcus. That's our favorite. 
That's Goldman Sachs Main Street Bank, M-A-R-C-U-S dot com. Marcus, we'll have a link in the show notes. Um, they pay uh, right now as the recording this podcast, 4.15 percent uh, in interest. Dollar minimum balance, no fees. Uh, Ally Bank is another one, A-L-L-Y dot com. And they pay uh, right at 4 percent right now. And we like them because they have outstanding customer service. I know they don't have bricks and mortar locations in the most places that people live, but because they're not having to pay for bricks, mortar, and all the employees there, they can make up the difference with interest. Mm -hmm. And their customer service is fantastic. I've been with them for nearly a decade. Mm -hmm. yep. I know you've used Ally a mm -hmm. lot. Any other banks you would say? Um, no, I mean, we like Ally. I know you like Marcus a lot. Um, so, I mean, I think... If someone wanted to have a brick and mortar in their town, understandable. Yep. But maybe just don't keep large chunks of said cash yeah. there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You can have a banking relationship with the local yeah. community bank, which we do. Mm -hmm. We actually run all of our business stuff through a local community bank. Yeah. So it's great. All right. Next one. How much cash should I keep? That's a great question. Well, the, we would just refer to the fully funded life ladder. Let's throw it up on the screen. Here it is. Well, since you've got cash, it sounds like you're figuring out how much you should keep. We're going to say you're at rung five. And it says to have a minimum, kind of circle and underline that word, minimum of three months worth of expenses. So whatever it takes your household to run for a month, you need at least three months of that. You could have up to 12 months of that, depending on your level of security that you feel like you need, the wonkiness of your income, uh, you know. Whatever that is, whatever makes you feel secure. But we recommend a minimum of three months worth. For the average family, that's ten to twenty thousand dollars sitting in cash. And I would say, refer to the previous question. Mm -hmm. By the way, we figured out to pause. We did. Yeah. Maybe he. We might have to have a fired up look, a little clock that builds a little pause there and say we put in this clock because Joe forgot to pause. Okay. But here's what I would say. Um, you know. Ten to twenty thousand dollars, and I would have that stored at Marcus at Ally, making some interest for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because we all know life happens, and it costs money. Mm -hmm. All right, the next question: How can you build a savings and pay off credit card debt without struggling slash living paycheck to paycheck? Hmm. Well, I can just say if you've built credit, uh, I, I, I was speaking again. <laughs> I'm pausing. Do you want me to read it again? <laughs> read it again for them. Okay. This is Joe's method of pausing. <laughs> <laughs> How can you build a savings and pay off credit card debt without struggling slash living paycheck to paycheck? Well, you, you know. You forgot to pause again. I, I paused. That was the pause. You talking was my pausing. There we go. How can it, 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 Comment on YouTube whether or not that was an appropriate type of pause. Megan talking means Joe's pausing. Okay. How can you build a savings, pay off the credit card debt without struggling living paycheck to paycheck? Well, let's just speak to the, what, what's being assumed in this question. They already have credit card debt and they have no savings. So that tells me they've already been struggling and living paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. So how do you do that without living paycheck to paycheck? Well, let me tell you, it's going to feel a lot like living paycheck to paycheck when you're fighting and it will feel like a fight to build savings. When you're fighting to pay off credit card debt, this is why we have the ladder and we put stuff in order. You should reduce all payments. If I woke up to on your shoes, I would reduce all debt payments to the minimum payment. The chances are you're paying 25 extra here, 30 extra here, 100 extra here. Stop that. Take all that extra and instead put it in savings. And if you get a tax refund, put it in savings. You get a little bonus at work, put it in savings. You sell some possession, put it in savings. You get overtime, put it in savings until you get rung to a month's worth saved up. And then make sure you get that company match at that company retirement plan that's rung three um, and, and $100 a month. If you don't have a company retirement plan, put that in a Roth IRA. And then and only then after you've built that month's savings, and you're getting that company match or at least started your Roth IRA with $100 a month, then take extra money and put it towards that debt. But here's the, the premise of the question is, 
how do you avoid struggling and living paycheck to paycheck, but you're stating that you have no savings and you have credit card debt. Yeah. So the news flash, Hey, which would you rather play? Would you rather, would you rather be broke and not making progress or would you rather feel broke, but actually making progress? Yeah. Now, I would rather have a budget and make those dollars behave. And yeah, it feels like I'm struggling a little bit, but when I check a savings account, Ooh, <laughs> la la, it's got some money and the investment account. It's grown a little bit. Yeah. Ooh. Isn't that nice? <laughs> yeah. That yeah. Is nice. Cause that's what, that's the sound. It's the actual sound humans make when they find out savings is growing. <laughs> ooh. It's really, ooh, ooh. So, great. All right. What do you do when your spouse is not on the same page as you with financial planning? Hmm. Cue the Jeopardy music. See, I'm making sounds. Is that pausing? Yeah, we actually have a guy that can put the sounds yeah. in. You don't what do you do, do when your spouse is not on the same page as you with financial planning? Well, newsflash, almost all spouses are not on the same page. Hmm. Some of them are closer. Uh, some are on the same page. They're on different lines. Some are on the same page, and one of them's on the bass clef, and one's on the treble clef. Oh. Ooh, talking the music over here. Symphonic production's heart is going pitter-pat. Some are playing the drum beat, and others are on the sousaphone, right? <laughs> here's what I know. That also, I think it's also known as tuba, but I don't know. But here's what I know. We can put a big red X if that's not, right, from Family Feud. So here's what I would say. What do you do when your spouse is not on the same page as you with financial planning? Uh, it goes back to the dreams. You just got to go back to the dreams and say, hey, what are we trying to what are we trying to do here? Mm -hmm. What are we trying to build here? Yeah. Right. Whenever I feel like Jen and I are getting on different pages. Well, I take her out to one of the dreams we have funded. So we go sit in the barn which was my dream. <laughs> I was about to say, doesn't we go sound sit like at her the dream. pool, which was absolutely her dream. There you go. Or we sit on the back porch, which was our dream. Mm -hmm. And we say, okay, okay. Now we've been able to somehow pull all this off together. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we, we know we can do this. So how do we, how do we get on the same page? So I, I remember when Jen wanted the pool and I'm finally begrudgingly being drug along for the pool. I don't want a pool. I'm I'm making all the jokes. I'm literally paying money to dig a hole in the ground. I'm throwing my money in a hole in the ground. And we were arguing, which is, I think you use intense fellowship. Yeah. We were intensely fellowshipping about where it should be. And we're walking around the yard and we're putting these little wire flags everywhere. And should it be right out the back? Should it be off to the back? Should it be over here? Should it be over there? And I mean, it was like, I'm like, man, I, like I'm finally saying, let's do this. And now I can't believe we're fighting about this. This seems so here's what I know. Um, I call it wallowing. I, what I encourage you to do with your spouse is to wallow in it. Um, wallowing is like a, 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 a farm kid. So I think of pigs that we had where they get down in the slop and they just wallow in it and they get it all over themselves. And to keep from getting sunburnt, pigs can get sunburnt or to keep flies, the horse flies off of them. And I find that it's really good to just get all the orneriness, the intense fellowshipping all over you. Because in the midst of that, if you're fighting fair, you'll end up with a better decision because you got it all over you. You've, you've, you've explored every angle of what what the differences are between the two of you and you'll come up with something that meets both of your needs mm. so what i would encourage you to do is to wallow i would encourage you to fight fair don't attack the person address the issue and go back to other things you've accomplished together that are really good and say hey we figured this out hey how can we work on this so that we can figure this out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's good a lot of times I will tell you the spouse, uh, one of them wants to really help the kids. The other one is like, Hey, we've helped them enough. I'm like ready for some stuff for us. And there's a, I don't know. Yeah. How am I doing here? Doing great. Okay, great. All right. What is your biggest piece of advice for teenagers when it comes to finances? Q 
cue the awkward pause. I paused. Look that at that. Was a long proud pause. Of me. Make yeah. sure you didn't fall asleep over there. What are your biggest piece of advice? Well, I was taking a deep breath in and out because we mentioned the word teenagers. I've got one in my house again. Had a brief period where I didn't have teenagers. My oldest one had turned 20. And uh, and the, the younger two were their preteen. Mm. But, but the middle one just snuck right in. <laughs> right in there to the 13. And so what is my biggest piece of advice for teenagers when it comes to finances? My biggest piece of advice is to teach them uh, the value of a dollar. Mm. And for us, it is we've done it. We have not yet done this 13 year old. You'll know when your kid is mature enough to handle this. But for our oldest one, we basically had her do research. I know I've shared this before on the podcast, but we had her do research of how much it cost for her school lunch, for her running shoes and her clothes because she was a runner, um, for all the stuff that she, her own clothes. And we came up with an annual number and we divided it by 12 and said, okay, here's your number. And we're going to give you that in cash every month. And you're going to have to submit a budget every month before you get that money. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have accountability for how you did last month. And so I would say I would encourage your teenager to dream, but I would also teach them how to manage money, how to prepare a plan every month and hold them accountable and let them make mistakes while they're still in the household. You're going to learn very quickly. You already know this if they're teenagers you know whether or not they're a natural born spender or saver. You already know that. So you're going to be able to help guide them so that they can still prosper even with their predisposition towards saving or spending. Savers tend to not want to take risk at all. Mm. So they don't, they, they're nervous about investing a lot. Uh, spenders, they love to invest because they get the feeling of spending money <laughs> and risk taking. Uh, savers have no problem having a plan for every dollar. That's something that's really easy for them. A spender feels like that interrupts their float. Mm -hmm. And so the budget's got to go, right? So you're just going to coach them on it and, and let them have failures in the household, learning moments, teachable moments. And plus it means that you cap the spending that you're going to have on that child, mm -hmm. which is awesome. Yeah, yeah. And they shop in different places. Mm -hmm. They go from where do they go from now? I used to say they would go from the mall. I drove past our mall in town and it is like, I don't know, not doing good. No one goes to the mall. I liked the mall as a kid. I thought it was awesome. Air conditioned indoors. Awesome. Yeah. You have the Chinese food court, the Chinese food there, always a Chick-fil-A in there. I think the Chick-fil-A in our mall the, And the steak escape and all that stuff. They're all awesome. I don't think they're there anymore. And now everybody wants to go shop outside. I don't know. Or on Amazon. So you go from there to being a planner and winning with money. Yeah. Get fired up. And you wrote a book on, about all of this. Yeah. Too. I wrote a book called what everyone should know about money before they enter the real world. There you go. And it's hard to say. Long so title. we just call it West cam. It's the, it's the initials of the first six <laughs> words of the book. What everyone should know about money tagline before they enter the real world. <laughs> so is that it? Is that it for the Q and a? That's it. Awesome. Do you have any comments on the stuff that I said today? Um, no, I think you did good. I mean, I think it's a nice wide variety. You know, we had some investing questions, some budgeting, some banking questions. Um, Teenager questions, teen yeah. parenting. Spouse. Spousal. Spousal. Is that a word? Spousal. 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 Yeah. Spousal education. <laughs> I, I did not mention with them that you could just yell at your spouse endlessly. Yeah, that you probably, know, probably would work. I, I bet you they probably already tried it. Probably. And so I would not do that. It. No. it you, what do they say? Uh Steve Martin said, never fight about money because in the end, all you've done is said a bunch of mean things to each other and you're still in the same financial place <laughs> and you're just mad. Yeah. So, all right. Well, Hey, it's a great Monday. Uh, hopefully one of these questions hit you right where you're at in your money journey towards your fully funded life. We will see you on the final day of July. Can you believe it next Monday? And we will be targeting uh, helping you in your journey one step at a time to win so that you can live your fully funded life. Have a great week, everybody.